<laughs> but the where Spielberg comes in, so you got Peter Jackson who's doing great with the uh, the, the technical expertise here, and I'm sure when he comes in to direct the second movie, because I heard that they're going to flip flop. Yeah, they're going to change places yeah. on the next. And I'm one. sure he's going to do just as well. I mean, we saw a lot of great action in the Lord of the Rings films, but Spielberg. He's able to do a lot with the action here as far as the camera work does that he's able to do to a little bit with live action, but not to the extent that he does here. There are scenes that just go on and on where the camera is following, doing almost like a point of view of the character, flying from a rope, going through windows, going over an edge of a building or a cliff. And it's all one just continuous shot. Yeah, yeah. the it, motorcycle chase scene in Morocco in this film. Yeah. Is, and the kind of the beginning of the last reel is it may be the most epic action sequence I've ever seen. I, I just was like, this year Holy definitely. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's one of those things to watching it. All I thought after the end of that scene, because when you when when you're done with that scene, you are exhausted sitting oh, like yeah. looking at that screen. You're exhausted. You're like, wow, that was that was the greatest ride I've been on. That man, Six Flags has been ripping me off for years. Yeah, no, they, wow. kicked, they kicked but, me out because yeah, I lit up a cigarette right there. But, but the thing is, is that you know when you when you see that scene, all I thought about after that was really like, wow, Steven Spielberg's imagination is off the charts. That a real camera, real life, can never get what's really going on in that guy's head. Sometimes, well, I think in the beginning of his career, he, it definitely it definitely was there. But the extent that he goes with this film, it, it makes me excited to see. Like, it makes me want to see another stop motion animator or, or stop motion. Uh, <laughs> capture film capture whatever the fuck you mo guys want to call it. Mo, mo, cap, mo, <laughs> mo, yeah, mo, mo, mo Larry and Curly Cap, whatever. Uh, it makes me want. It makes me want to see another film by this guy because seeing this, seeing this, it's like a birth of an of. A more intense Spielberg that I haven't seen in a really long time. Yeah, it, where I'm like, I'm excited to see another Ten Ten movie if it's directed by him. It's you know? like Spielberg was getting all old and crinkled, and he couldn't mm -hmm. quite move in his shell anymore. Mm -hmm. And then, like a phoenix, he burnt up in a brand <laughs> new, young and fresh, but different yeah. Spielberg. Yeah. Mocap in our animation is like Viagra for Spielberg as far mm -hmm. as directing sensibilities. Because look, let's 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 be honest. I mean, we haven't really even put the review up yet for this when people hear this for the first time. But we saw War Horse. War Horse, it's got a lot of incredible Man. imagery in it. But but still, there's a lot of old tricks that Spielberg uses as far as camera angles go. He repeats several of the same shots in the same film. And looking at this here, I mean, there's one scene. It's not even anything really incredible. It was just fun to see it being done from a different perspective. And that is like the perspective of Snowy. There's a scene where Tintin is getting kidnapped. Snowy can't get out the house. And the camera just barely above the floor follows Snowy as he runs up the stairs, hops out the window, jumps from car to car. And I was like, I have, I really have not seen Spielberg be this playful, mm -hmm. at least not in a way that I've seen him being here. We talk about the comedy. Some of the comedy was a little bit too overbearing can, can, for can me. I, can I, I say something? What? As, as much as you guys are just so in love with this movie, I liked it a lot, but... Where it fell down for me was the humor. Quiet, you. I, I, well, actually, no, I'm with Liam on this. I, 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 I yeah. feel like a, a lot of the humor was just awkward or fell mm. flat. Those those bumbling detectives. Thompson like, and Thompson. Like, I liked them at first, but then after a while, it was like, man, they send a bunch of stuff that's just not funny, and I'd rather they, they would just leave. Well, you and I, know, um, we, we are on the same page on that. There are a couple of scenes, especially with them, where not only did they just go on too long, they 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 went on too long and were not funny. It yeah, was, yeah. It was just and it was just a couple of scenes. But while the action's great, a lot of the humor here is, I mean, it's it's like watching somebody tell a bad joke. It's disposable, which is surprising considering how many great people wrote that's this a, script. That, that, that's what was throwing me. It was like, man, such huge talents on this. You know, you got you know Edgar Wright's name is in the credits and Joe Cornish, who's attacked the block. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So that the fact that like that the writing was so mediocre through. through Kind of throughout the whole thing, just kind of bummed me out because I was like, "Damn it!" There's so much about this I'm loving, and yet, like this this mystery itself, like you said, Cyrus, it's it's generic. Matter yeah. of fact, the more they focused on it, the less I was interested. I, I started kind of, I almost missed that 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 giant set piece at the toward the end with the big motorcycle chase because I had just kind of zoned out because I was like, "Yeah, I I'm, I kind of like I've lost the thread of the story and I don't care about picking it up." And there was a point like Tin Tin is such a fascinating character, and I know like I think Andy Circus does a great job of playing a captain. But there came a point where it focused so much on the captain and that family history. I was just like, I really don't. That care was about this. that was almost annoying. Damn. How many times, like, because Captain Haddock, you know, he's a drunk. Yeah, and 
he, in order to get clues from him, they have to keep giving him alcohol. And there's about a good 30 minutes where he's just getting fucked up. And he's just like, I remember now. Back in the, I was like, man, I don't like telling stories too much through flashback. Well, yeah. it's, and it's, Hey, guys, it's like, hey guys, I got, I got like two more balloons. There's a red and a yellow one. You guys want to pop those two? <laughs> <laughs> I had, like, I had like a big ass pile of balloons come here. On, I was like, come on. No, we, my, let, my, we let you suck the movie's dick for the last. I'm flying minutes. in the sky and uh, yeah, all right, just two more. I, I got needle for for both of you motherfuckers right now. The thing I know is that like, all right, so I'm not a big fan of the 1010 comic book, right? And I admit that that's my fault. I get it. The rest of the entire rest of the world is in love with 1010. I'm not. I thought it was just okay, but this movie, plot wise, humor wise. It's the book, all right. It felt true. just like it. You know, yeah. it's funny because I, I was in Austin Books yesterday and picked up some 1010 10 books. Like, yeah, I remember these. And started reading through it. I was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty no, much But what they do in this movie is amazing. Yeah, but you know what? I, well, for me, uh, maybe it was the spirit of it, the spirit of wh- where, where this was coming from. Why I didn't mind so much, like the bumbling cops. Yeah, I, I get that. They were kind of a one note, the, the two of those. But they managed to, like, steer me in a way where I wasn't really so – so much focused on the humor because I mean I know I understand that this is still a kids movie not that you know I'm going to say okay it's a pass for them to write by bad dialogue I just didn't notice it as much as you guys did which I was really surprised now one thing I will also say about it is uh, seeing it in 3D uh, this is one where I would say don't if you don't have to really I feel the opposite are you serious well I mean despite whatever visual tricks when I saw it um, I noticed I thought that's a little dark and then today right before coming over here they were showing a, uh, a trailer, and I was watching it on HD in my, on my TV. Uh, it's, it's one with Snowy running through the cows. And I was just like kind of blown away by how crystal clear and 3D it looks without that. Might have yeah. been just a matter of the theater you saw that, because when I saw it, it was really bright, and it looked great. I think it's a matter of you just wore your Ray-Bans instead of putting on some special <laughs> 3D glasses. Sure. I can't see it. The screen's all sure. fuzzy. Yes. I ain't getting the effect. You, I think, that, I think, you, were, what it I think was. you were wearing your hater shades. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. I don't like the humor. Here's an important note to remember when you're going to see 3D. Make sure you're going to see it at a theater that gives a shit. Because yeah. really, most theaters don't. Those bulbs they have to use to make it bright enough where it's, you know, it's not all dark and shadowy, they cost like five times what a regular theater bulb does. Yeah. And most theaters aren't even using in their regular theater bulbs ones that are as bright as they're supposed to be. There ain't no law saying they have to, so they just don't. Best bet is to go to the newest fucking theater you can find That's and true. see it in 3D there, where the odds are they've got the right equipment. Where it fails to capture maybe that sense of adventure in the story, it makes up in its pacing and in, in its visuals and and just some amazing camera work. It's truly a it, it truly is a ride when you watch this Absolutely, kind of movie. Yeah. And, yeah, and you can't help but be just immersed in it because you know the Spielberg puts you in act in the in the movie. You, you whenever Tintin is going through his, his you know some of the, the the like some of the crazy camera work in this film, you're like you're holding Tintin by the waist. <laughs> you know you're right behind him, like you're riding on a motorcycle with him or something. So I mean, adults will be just as thrilled as children are, and yeah, it's uh, full price. Uh, I love the portrayal of of Tintin. What a, just a proactive character he was. He was not one to sit around. He was all about, hey, let's move on to this next thing. Let's do this. Come on, Snowy. And, yeah, and Tintin he, ain't no punk. Yeah. No, he's he's not. It wasn't his dog doing all the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, the, 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 the dog's a good assistant. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, it's him. Uh, uh, man, they really are so close to the point where they just aren't going to need people to act in these things anymore at all. I, you know, t- ten years we won't. E- we'll be like, oh, you remember when I used to get people in these things? They had to it remember was so lines. Dangerous. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and yet, you know, the the problems I had with the with with the story and the humor, they they dragged it down for me more than I wish they had. So it, it comes up being like a, a a high matinee for me. You know, I think I must have liked it just a little bit more than you did because even though. I agree with absolutely everything you just said, Leon. Uh, I, I, I end up giving it a low full price. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine not going in to see this in the theater, not telling someone, no, no, you really do need to go see this and go see it in 3D. I mean, it's just that much of an experience. Well, I'm going to give it a full price uh, for, for a character uh, and just, you know, what that character is. It was something I just never cared about. And this movie made me interested 
and that time I was in that theater, and like the 3D is amazing. Yes, you do have to. If you see this without the 3D, you just you just threw your money away. The kids are gonna fucking eat this up. They're gonna love it. Uh, yeah, you fucking yeah, kids throw, eat this. Throw, throw the, yeah, <laughs> eat this eat, shit. Yeah, kid. eat this. If you don't if you don't get a Christmas turkey, you you eat this. All right, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah turkey. throw your goddamn kids in the movie theater. Yeah, so so they're not screaming <laughs> at the goddamn post office like they were today. Spielberg has a whole a whole new brand new. He, Christmas came early for that guy. He has new toys. <laughs> play with and I, I look forward to him playing with them again so yeah this is a definitely a full price for me wow you know what that last Indiana Jones movie they should have just animated that shit and just kept Indy young just just have him the whole fucking thing animated <laughs> next time okay. I mean and it will be that much believable I will think that revi- that refrigerator scene fucking is the coolest shit ever and and, and yeah it would have it would have easily worked and I think Spielberg finally figured that out with this movie by by doing it it's true but had uh, Harrison Ford agreed to do that they would have not stopped doing that with other movies it'd been like alright y'all might as well go to the old actors home because we're, all we're going to do is CG you from now on well mm-hmm. you know what yeah, to a certain extent sure but you have to get those actors back for their voice if they're that iconic damn <laughs> now, you, you can get anybody to sound like somebody today mm-hmm. but you know that yeah. doesn't matter you'd have to in some cases yeah. like if they tried to do like original Star Wars themed stuff like you'd have to get somebody to do Carrie Fisher because now she sounds yeah. like this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want me to say not a goddamn thing she sounds like that goddamn sailor in Tintin <laughs> y'all be one cut Kenobi, you're my only hug. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs>